praise God. We thank God for this day the Lord has given us. We appreciate Him. He is God and He deserves our praise. I want to appreciate every one of us that is tuning in and I trust that the Lord has kept you, the Lord has preserved you and the Lord is watching over your life. We were created in His image and His likeness and there is no way God will forsake the people He created. Just have faith that God is ready to watch over you and to show you his mercies, his grace, and his love. I, I will always be grateful forever that you tune in, you watch, you also, you know, um, do a, a, you do a watch party, you share so that somebody will also get the very word that God intends that we share from. And the Lord will bless you. I want us to pray. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you in the precious name of Jesus for the grace you have given us to share from your word. Entrance of your word is light bringing understanding to the simple. And I pray that, Lord, you bless everyone that is part of this hearing and let your name be glorified. Use me, Lord. Use me and use me again for the glory and honor of your name. I pray for everyone that will watch. May the blessing that is in your word come our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to share a message that has come to me so powerfully in my heart this season concerning repaying good for the evil in our environment. When people saw evil acts in our life, we have room to display God. We have room not to retaliate. We have room to respond with love to respond with the heart of god not the same way people want us to respond but to respond with the love of god we have no room to repay evil for evil god has given us a chance to repay good for the evil that people do for us and i want us to open acts of the apostles chapter 16 acts of the apostles chapter number 16 to draw our strength from the word of God you see it's only the word of God that can help us to do what is right the Bible says I've hidden your word O Lord in my heart that I may not sin against you when we revenge we sin but when we act on this word we will we will be blessed we will be blessed allow me to read from verse 28 the story of Paul and the jailer the story of Paul and the jailer from verse 20, let's read from verse 28. But Paul shouted. Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do not do yourself no harm, for we are here. The jailer called. Uh, he, then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Verse 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized him and all his family were baptized now when he had brought them into his house he set food before them and he rejoiced having believed in god with all his household may the lord bless the reading of the word i i want to speak using this illustration that is given to us in the book of acts about the apostle paul and his friend silas who you know were thrown in prison they were thrown in prison not for any bad thing they had done. They were thrown in prison for serving God. They were thrown in prison for doing what they need to, to do in the kingdom of God. While they were doing ministry, they came across as a girl who had some familiar spirits. And uh, because the familiar spirits had been employed, you know, she had been employed by men who are getting their fortune from her familiar spirits. They, she prophesies using familiar spirits and then those that were 
were in charge of all this business were getting some earning from that. She followed Paul and Silas when they were going for ministry, returning, going for ministry, returning. Until one day, Paul was like, I'm tired of this spirit in this girl. And then he cast it out. So those who are getting some revenue from the spirit in this girl, they got bitter with Paul and then they arrested Paul and Silas and they threw, after beating stripes, several stripes, they beat up Paul and Silas and then they, throw, they threw them into prison. So the Bible says in the middle of the night, when you read from verse number 25, in the middle of the night, when Paul and Silas, instead of complaining, instead of murmuring because of the beatings, the torture, the pain, Paul and Silas were different. They started to praise God because of a heart that does not revenge, a heart that does not allow bitterness, a heart that is ready to glorify God even when evil has happened to you. Because the Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. There are people, when evil happens in the environment, they tune to complaining, bitterness. They focus so much on the negative done, on what God can do in their environment. Different from Paul and Silas. They were thrown in prison, yes. They were beaten, yes. But in the middle of the night, it never changed anything. They started to praise God. They started to sing hymns. And they were praying to God. And God was pleased with them because God saw a different heart in them. And so as they were doing that, Bible says there was an earthquake. There was an earthquake suddenly, verse 26, there was an earthquake. And uh, that earthquake was so violent until the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose including Paul, including Silas, and the other prisoners. The chains broke loose, you know, the chains broke loose. And the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted to him and said, Do not yourself harm, verse 29. Verse 29, and then he called for a light and ran in and fell trembled, down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I just want to pause here. Many prisoners, for the torture they go through, the mess they go through while in prison, they have never been friends to warders. They have never been friends to warders. And whenever they have chance, they will do away with any water. The, 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 the people who, you know, keep them in prison. But here comes a situation where men that have been stripped, men that have been beaten, there are bruises all over. And a miracle has happened and the doors have opened, they are now free. And then a prison warder who was supposed to die, you know, drawing a sword to kill him because... He fears the penalty that will come for having not contained the prisoners while that was his duty. The men who were supposed to be bitter because they were in prison, Paul says, don't do that. We have not run away. Even though the doors are open, nobody has escaped. This is not a natural thing. It is a supernatural thing. We are here and we are not running away. We are here. Don't kill yourself. Look at that. A different heart in Paul, a different heart in Silas. There is no bitterness, there is no revenge. Instead they are seeing there is room to minister goodness to this man. Whereas we were supposed to be bitter, whereas we were supposed to revenge. And it moves the prison water until he has a powerful question he is asking in verse, 20, verse 30. It really moved him in verse number 30. Until he asked the question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There is something the prison warder saw in Paul that moved his heart and he said, we are wrong. If these men have been beaten, the much they have been beaten, and they are not bitter. They have been frustrated and they are not bitter. There is something special in this man. 
And he must have known that jails were rendered open because two men were praising God. Two men were worshipping God and praying. And he must have felt there is a God whom these men are connected to. To a point they were not bitter in prison, but they were blessed. They had a heart of God praising God. And I'm here to say, some people will do evil for us. Let us not retaliate. Let us not revenge. Let us not tune to bitterness. In the place of bitterness, praise God. In the place of hatred, praise God. Sing your songs. Glorify God over your, your bruises. Glorify God over the hatreds. Glorify God over the many things people have done for us. We have no room in the inside of us to have a hatred, bitterness, pain, but we can replace all that with the praises to the Lord. When this prison warder discovered these men were singing, they were praising God, while others probably were just quiet, contemplating on hatred and other things. The man said, I want to be like Paul. I want to be like Silas. And he says, Sirs, what must I do? And then he said, they say to him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. And that is what he does. Verse 32, he does this exactly that. And then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set foot before them, and he rejoiced having believed in God with all his household. Look at what reward Paul gives to the man who was in the previous hour and like an enemy, a soldier watching over them so that they don't run away. But in the few coming hours or coming minutes, Paul is encouraging the man to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I'm asking, is it possible that you can go and preach to your enemy? The very people who stole from you, instead of going to report them to police and create another case, you use that chance because this man is guilty. They are guilty for wronging us. But we just say, now that they are guilty, at least they are in a level to hear Christ because when they thought we would imprison them, we give them room to hear the word of God. We should not always be punishing evil. We can also create room for people to hear the gospel in a situation where they were expecting us to have a heavy hand on them. Paul preached to a man who was not supposed to be even a friend of Paul in that context. He preached to him and this man was moved and he gave his life to Jesus. He gave his family to know Jesus and there was rejoicing. He had to you know, do a party for Paul and for people and they rejoiced because when you repay good for evil you preach the kingdom of God when you repay good for evil you are a light that is shining in this dark world the Bible says in Matthew 5 16 let your light so shine that men will see this light and glorify the God in heaven Matthew 5 16 sometimes God will allow evil that dark evil so that your light will be so brighter when God allows your environment to be so evil, it is that darkness that will appear to be so dark so that your light will be shine and the brightness of your light will glorify the Lord. When somebody hates you too much, love him too much. When somebody mistreats you so much, treat them so well, so well, so that your light will shine in the darkness of this world. That will glorify God. The Bible says, and glorify your Father in heaven this world is full of people that are full of revenge i want to just show you something about revenge so that you see revenge will attract a curse not a blessing in the book of genesis chapter 34 genesis 34 verse number 25 two sons of jacob two sons of jacob that is levi and simeon after she came and the people that were dwelling in that land they messed up with diana a sister to simeon and uh, levi they took her for a wife against the wishes of the family of jacob two men simeon and levi the bible says now it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain 
that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Diana's brothers, each took his sword and came and boldly upon and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. Verse 26. And they killed Hamor, and she came his son with the edge of the sword and took Diana from she came's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. That is a story of revenge. Revenge because the, to the people who were dwelling closer to Jacob's family who were treated to be defiled, who were treated to be aliens to the covenant after they took Diana because she was so beautiful, the daughter of Leah. Simeon and Levi in anger, they slaughtered those men. They revenged, they, you know, treated, they, 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 they repaid evil for evil by, you know, tricking the men to get circumcised. You know, cheating them that after they are circumcised, they can now interrelate. And on the third day when the pain is sore, they cannot, you know, help themselves. They cannot fight for themselves because of the circumcision. They come with pangas, they cut them, and it was all messy because of anger. This grieved God. It also grieved Jacob. That anger because of somebody just having taken Diana for a wife. And they, they kill. They kill for an act of defilement. You cannot equate defilement with death. You cannot pay evil for evil. So when Jacob is about to die in Genesis 49.7. When Jacob is about to die in Genesis 49.7. Genesis 49 verse number 7. Jacob is about to die and he calls for his children to bless them. In Genesis chapter 49 verse 7. The two come and appear before Jacob. That is Simeon and Levi. And what do we find from Jacob's mouth concerning these two? He says, cast be their anger. That is Simeon and Levi. Let's read verse 6 so that you see. It is Simeon and Levi. Jacob speaks about them. Let not my soul enter their counsel. Let not my honor be united with the assembly. Let's read verse 5. I want us to see. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Verse 6. Let not my soul enter their counsel. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man. And in their self-will... They hamstrung an ox. Cast be their anger for its fears, and their wrath for its cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. That is what I wanted us to see. You see, when Simeon and Levi were acting in anger to prove that they really loved their sister Diana, they were sowing into the land that will give back to them a curse and scattering. They did that without knowing. But later on, when their father is just about to die, instead of handing over to them a blessing, he curses them. He scatters, he scatters them. He says, you will be scattered in Israel. They will never come together to be strong. They will be scattered. Could there be some family that is almost being scattered? Because some people revenged. Instead of, you know, repaying good for evil, they repaid evil for evil and they sowed a seed that will come out to scatter their life. There are families that will never meet together, all of them at the same time, because of the evils of the past. We can repent over that sin and tell God we are not to be repaying evil for evil. We will never give room for anger, neither will we have a grudge to behave contrary to the word of God and allow a curse to come upon our life. Simeon and Levi were cursed because of anger, but we're going to be blessed. Unlike Simeon, and this other man, we see Stephen receiving stones, but he's asking God, forgive these men, for they do not know what they are doing. When people throw stones to us, let's pray for their forgiveness. And God will treat us as children of God. The Bible says, as long as it's within our power to make for peace, let's make peace. Don't repay evil for evil. Instead, repay good to the evil that men have done. We will be called children of God. If we make peace, we will be called children of God. How blessed it is for a man to be a child of God. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love 
the Father has given us that we may be called children of God. We should be peacemakers. May God create in us a clean heart, a heart that can forgive our wrongdoers. Even the murderers that have done evil to us, Jesus prays for those who are you know, putting him on the cross that they will be forgiven for they did not understand what they were doing. Even when he was reviled, he reviled not back. Even when he was insulted, he never insulted back. Even after they spat on Jesus on the cross, he never spat back to the people. He forgave them. He gave them room to change. Look at the man who was next to him on the cross. He even forgave him and said to him, we will share paradise together. He was not bitter. Jesus was happy that you know, God gave him to die for mankind. Let's not allow rage. Let's not allow anger. Let us not allow the devil to create room for us. We are children of God. And the blessing of God will come over our life. I want to pray with somebody. This is not a season to repay evil for evil. This is a season to be the light of the world. This is a season to be the salt of the world. In our family, our place of work, our ministry, choose to be different. And the Lord will bless you. The only way to be different is having a heart of a born again person. The heart of repentance, a clean heart, a contrite spirit is through forgiveness from God. When God forgives you, you'll be able to forgive others. Repeat this prayer of repentance after me. The prayer of giving yourself to Jesus and allowing him to be Lord over your life. The same way is Lord over my life. Repeat this prayer. Father, I repent my sins in the name of Jesus. I ask you to come into my life. I make you Lord and I make you Savior of my life. Please forgive me. Today, I belong to you. Amen. If you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart, from the bottom of your heart, Jesus has become Lord over your life. And the same way he forgave, his grace will give us ability, me and you, to forgive those who wrong our life. The Bible says in the Lord's Prayer, forgive those who for, help us, forgive us because we are forgiven those who wrong against us. When you forgive those who wrong you, you can do good to them. And the Lord will bless you. I want to declare, even those who are born again, and you've been struggling with, in your heart to forgive somebody. You've been struggling, you've been avoiding somebody, you don't want to greet them. You never smile to somebody because they wronged you. May the Lord create a clean heart in us, smile to them, give them food, bless them, and the Lord will bless you. God judges the heart. Jeremiah 17, 10, God will judge your actions. If your actions are right, men may not appreciate. The Lord will bless you because of your actions that are clean from your heart. And you will always be promoted like Joseph. You will always be promoted like David. You will always be promoted like Stephen. who was given a standing ovation in heaven. May the Lord give you to be blessed because of your good acts. Where there is no revenge, Jesus will give you a standing ovation in heaven. And angels will rejoice. Because you will have shown you are a child of God and not a product of hell. May the Lord bless you for tuning in. May we shine in this dark world with actions of love. The Lord bless you. There is a number on your screen that will help you serve God with what is given you. Even when things are tough, you don't become bitter and say, I will not give. These people are robbers. We are not robbers. We are servants of God. We use a lot of money to preach the gospel. And the Lord uses some people to be a blessing to this great work. God can use you to be a blessing to this work, if only you allow your heart. The Lord bless you, and the Lord prosper you. Father, bless every giver, every sower in this great work. Bless them and prosper their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you.